Hey everyone, welcome to part 25 in this FXS Lowrider Restoration Series. If you're first joining us, you could click on this link in the top right corner. It'll take you to a listing of all the videos. You could click on the first link, or whatever link you left off from, and continue from there. In our last video, prep and repair work was conducted on the frame. The rear brake tee was repaired. The transmission was dropped in. Stator installed. Chain cleaned and reintroduced in a primary bearing replacement, addressing more problems left by the machinist, installing the inner primary, taking apart everything to repair the threads that I asked the machinist to check during the crank rebuild, then taking apart everything again to replace the tranny mount because some of the pieces had broken off and it was flexing. Finally, talking it down to bring that chapter to a close. In this video, we're gonna sidestep to rebuild this Hitachi starter. It's never really worked reliably, so we're going to dedicate some time to tear it apart, find out why, and hopefully get it working like new again. So let's get started. Before disassembly, you'll see how it mounts to the outside of the inner primary on this left-hand side. It screws in from inside the inner primary as the threads are on the actual starter. On the right-hand side, or the rear portion, we can see that there are no threads, and the threads are actually on the inner primary itself. There are two keys here to align it into position on the inner primary. I'll use a 3A socket to remove the nut to take off the support bracket. This is already loosened from the deinstallation from the motorcycle. These two studs run the length of the starter. I'll remove them now with a 516 socket. The shaft housing comes right off with no issue. We'll clean this up and deal with this as a separate piece. There's a bearing inside as well. We'll inspect later. Already seeing funny things. I already see a little separation on the cover. So I pop it off expecting to see the armature come with it. <laughs> and I don't. It's not pressed in. And I see the bearing there. And the bearing seems to be in the right position. And it seems to spin fine. But that bearing should be pressed into the cover. And it should pull out with the armature. And it does not. This is already seeming a bit strange. We definitely have an issue here. That bearing must be spinning in the cover. I take a look inside the cover and we could see evidence of that. The cover itself seems okay, but wow, that's not good. So we've identified a problem. With this in mind, I drop the cover back on and take it back off. I don't feel any drag whatsoever. I'm going to move on. I'm going to take this nut off this post, and I'm just going to loosen the nut under it real quick. And this is 7 sixteenths, just a couple turns, just so that nylon material doesn't bind on the cap. Now I'm going to pull out that armature that should have already been removed. Now I'm going to break tension on these two screws on the end cap with a fitted screwdriver. They are in pretty tight and put up a fight. Give it a couple of gentle wraps around the insulator just to loosen any loose paint around it. And then holding the insulator in place, I wiggle the cap back and forth to remove it. The brushes look dirty, but definitely not worn out. It comes as no surprise as started. Definitely did not get a whole lot of use in the last decade. Everything needs to be cleaned up. I don't see any structural problems like broken parts or pieces or chunks missing. In the end cap, I do see some shims. There's also one that came off on the armature. I do want to confirm that they are the correct ones that are called out in the Harley parts manual. I'll assume that they're correct for now. I'm waiting for some parts to arrive. So we're going to prepare what we can at this time using some kerosene. We're going to clean that outer cover, drop it in there. I want to get all the garbage out of the bearing. I'm going to clean this part with the assumption that the bearing is going to be reused. After the bearing is cleaned out, we're going to see what happens. And if it's not working, if it's stuck, then I'm just going to pop it out. We're going to buy a new bearing. But we're not going to know yet until we try. I'm blowing it out, particular attention be paid to the bearing. Once it's dried, I'm going to keep spraying it with carb cleaner, letting it soak, and blowing it out again. Make sure I get all the debris out. The bolts were cleaned and added. Penetrating oil was sprayed into the bearing. And now it'll be placed on the complete table. And now for the cover. Shh. 
Inside the cover now cleaned, we could see that the paint is eroded away. A silhouette of tape on both sides. Here's one piece of that tape that I found is removed. So we're going to probably put that back on once this cover is done up. You can see on the other side as well. And this bushing right here, this is torn up. I've cleaned the bottom of this so we can see as I place this in. Look how it wiggles. This whole thing flexes. Look at that. So yeah, I'm going to have to replace that bushing. It's no good. The cover itself goes on the finish table though. That's done for now. This cover also cleaned onto the finish table. I'm suspicious of these thrust washers, supposedly part 31584-73. Uh, most notably because when I measure them, we'll see here, one of them is 10 thousandths of an inch. And the other one is 20 thousandths of an inch, even though they're the same part number. So that's going to need to be investigated. I try cleaning a small section of the commutators just to see the condition. Make sure everything's looking okay. There doesn't appear to be any major pitting, and it looks like there's life left in this, so we're going to go with this armature as long as it passes all the tests. I have a pick that I have cut sharp to scrape away the formations here between each track. There doesn't seem to be a terrible amount of buildup on this one, but I'll go through each one very carefully, ensuring that I remove any of the contents here between them. And then we'll do a final polishing all around. I don't need sandpaper to do this because they're in good condition and I'll avoid it. If I could keep these smooth, it'll stop the brushes from wearing down prematurely since I'm going to replace them. So polishing paste, if it does the job, that's all we're going to go with. If I use sandpaper, I'm going to have to get it smooth like glass again. So I'll just take my time until all the copper is shined back up. I'm going to clean it off with a clean paper towel and do an inspection. Yeah, that looks to be about good. We'll bring everything outside and spray it down with some electrical contact cleaner. Spray this a couple more times and then let it drip dry. And we'll put this piece on the clean table. Conduct a short fail test with this meter on the outside of the armature connected to the commutator. I'm just going to spin it around in a circle. No shorts were heard, so it's good. Now I'll use a black piece of tape to mark the starting point of the next test. And basically I'm going to walk this around with the meter to ensure that every single segment is shorted together. Walking one to the next, back into the next, and back into the next, till I've reached that piece of tape at the beginning. If any part of these two tests fails, the entire armature would have to be replaced, but this did not. Now the old bushing will be removed because it's worn out and elongated. It's not even round anymore. Using a half inch tap, I'm going to screw the tap all the way in till it bottoms out. And then it'll push the whole bushing up, kind of like a cork does out of a wine bottle with a bottle opener. I'm just turning it slow, taking my time. We could see it coming up as I turn it. It'll eventually run out of bushing and it'll just fall out like that. The race for the bushing looks fine. Cap is good. So we'll unscrew it out of the tap now. I've cleaned everything up. This cap's going to need some work. And here's what the bushing looks like after it's been threaded. I'll take the cap on over to the shop. I'm going to start by sandblasting the cap and remove all the old paint from both inside and out. Now it'll be blown off with air and debris. Polyester tape will cover the race. Black gloss powder coat will be used to match the original finish. Let this cool down to room temperature and then we'll inspect. Everything came out good. Polyester tape is removed. This race is going to have to be cleaned up a little bit, so some thousand grit sandpaper is used. Polish up that race nice. Set up the blocks on the press with a hole and a rag, adding a little lubrication to the cover and a little bit on the new bushing. 
in the center of the bushing on the cover. Using a Torx bolt because of the flat round face to drive this bushing in. That way I don't mar any of the end surfaces of it. Went right in just under the chamfer. Looks really nice. This is done. Back on the main unit on the brushes that connect to the main unit. I'm pulling back on the spring with a small screwdriver. Get my finger behind it to pull back on the spring further. I could pull the brush through all the way and release it from the brush's holder. Spin it around and repeat this process on the other side. And that allows this whole unit to be removed. Put this off to the side. Now the main unit will be blown out with pressurized air. Clean with an electronic contact cleaner. And then finally with paper towel to remove any of the carbon powder that's in there. Setting up some weights to hold everything steady while I work. And I'm pulling out the old brushes with the soldering gun. I found it easier to clip it off first for heat dissipation purposes. I'm also using flux to make it easier. Allows it to flow better and just pry it out while it's hot and melted. A solder sucker removes all the solder that's caught in that loop. So I'm going through and just removing that solder. Go around the other side, do the same thing. Now we have enough to get like a screwdriver or a wedge in there, which I'm doing now under heat. So it's not brittle, easier to work, to bend these out a little bit to accommodate the new brushes. And that looks very nice. So the brush sets right in, same direction as before, but it all the way up. Give it a little clamp with the pliers. Though the wire was fluxed, I'll put a little bit of flux on the outside here too, just pack a little bit in for flow purposes. It'll take quite a bit of solder to wick in the wire as well as the surrounding void of the metal tab that was bent over. We see a nice clean connection completely filled. We'll repeat the same process on the other side. So we got cable flux, installation, crimp, reflux, and solder. That's it. Now we're going to replace the isolation block, removing all these nuts and washers. With nothing left but the stud, the block can be pulled right off. New one is slid on, locked over the ridge in position. Put the first two washers and a nut back on and tighten down that nut so we could seat this isolation block to the metal back block that it sits on. Once seated, we could loosen it a bit. Then we could put the rest of the nuts and washers back on so we don't lose them. When you compress a bushing into a cover, the inner diameter compresses a bit and we'll hear that it's such a tight fit that you could hear the air actually pop when it comes out. And that means the fit is so tight there'd be no grease on the sides, it's too smooth. So we're going to have to uh, scuff it up a bit. We can do that now. So we're going to carefully remove a fraction of a thousandth while adding texture to the wall where the grease could get between the bushing and the surface. And I'm using a wire brush with oil. See right here as I'm demonstrating. And we're going to be going in both directions. We're just starting off to have a look. This is a 50 caliber bore brush. The amount of bushing surface that's going to be removed should be filled in with the grease that's going to be added later. And you can see the microscopic residue of bushing material mixed with the oil. I'll do a thorough cleaning later. This is just testing. You can see the bushing material now taken up in the paper towel. And there's no longer a shine. It's sort of hazy and scratchy. That's what we're looking for. We'll try it out now. Seems like a much better fit. We're going to clean everything up. We'll get some grease in there and we'll try it again. Cap has been washed and scrubbed and now I've applied some grease and I'm going to distribute it evenly within the bushing. And just apply a remainder to the end of the shaft here. The grease now fills the void. And as we install it, we give it a spin a couple times and now spin it around almost like a bearing surface. This is very nice. Look at that. So it looks like this piece is finished. We're going to put this on the finished table and move on to the next item. The replacement bearing has arrived at 6004 ZZ. And just size it up here. We can see outer diameter is correct. And inner diameter, just to check, we see it falls right into that race. 
and there's some slop. Not good. Let's see what we can do. It pops right out. Let me take this down to the shop. There's no witness marks, nothing. So I don't have my tripod, so two of us are pulling this bearing off of the shaft. There's no problem. A bearing puller comes right off. Shaft looks good. Bearings got a lot of slop. I really wish I could buy a new cap, but I can't find one online. Instead, I'm going to try and peen the inner race. And here it is completed. Also, I'm going to use red Loctite. Most of the way in, I check it. We're going to drop it into just under the chamfer and finish it off. There it is completed. Move on to pressing the armature into the bearing now. So we set everything up on the press. Lay the end cap over with an appropriate size socket to distribute the force. We take a look and everything is now seated. Inspecting it closer, I take a look and I see that the shaft is not entirely straight. The armature is a little bit off when it spins. This is no good. Uh, this wasn't caught until everything was seated properly. Yeah, I can't use this. It's unfortunate. It's still going to work, so I'm going to complete the rebuild of this starter, but we're going to talk about this as we go along. Continuing with the brushes assembly, I'm pulling this spring out far enough to get it with my finger. And with the spring pulled all the way out, I could hold it. And there's room to take those brushes, one of the two that was soldered in, and slide it right into that socket and bring the spring back over it. There's a notch for the cable to fall into, as we see right here. So we drop it in that notch and the brush is in. Repeating that process on the other side now. All four brushes are now in place. Each brush will now be pushed in one at a time and the spring moved off to the side. The brush pulled out a little bit more, so the brush is now out of the way of the center portion. I see all the brushes are now held in an outward position. We take our armature cover and bearing assembly and slide it through the main portion of the starter. We see that keyed notch we're going to line up and just close it just like that. Observing that the notch in the cap is lined up to the screw hole, we set up the brushes holder accordingly, lining up the hole with the insulator. And now one at a time, we push in all the brushes so that the spring sits behind the brush, making sure that we don't push the plate that holds the brushes out of the way off the commutator. With all the brushes now seated and everything in position, we'll put the top cover on and we can see everything aligns up the notch. It's a little bit hard having powder coated everything. I have to kind of tap it down in position. With the holes lined up to the brushes holder, I can now reintroduce the screws just get both of them in loose. And then once they're in loosely and they're lined up, I could tighten them down with a screwdriver. Now we'll start installing the studs that hold everything together, keeping in mind that I'm not going to be putting the entire assembly together. So on this side, I'm going to secure it with a washer and a nut. And then I'm going to put the other one in the exact same manner. Secure it down. This is how it will be affixed if it were going back into the bike. But for our purposes, I'm just going to snug it down. The way that armature is bent, maybe I got a good hundred starts out of it. Chances are the first time I run this thing, it's going to eat that brass bushing in the back and have it look exactly like it did before I even opened this thing up before. That's probably why it looked like it did when I opened it because of that bend and I didn't initially catch it. Either way, let's try it out and see how it works. So yeah, the rebuild works and it sounds nice, but it's going to vibrate itself to pieces. And if I put it in the bike, I'm probably going to end up taking it out within a year. So sadly, I'm going to replace it, but it was still a fun rebuild nonetheless. And that concludes our rebuild for this Hitachi starter for a shovel head engine. I hope you enjoyed this video, found it entertaining and informative. Hit that like button down below, helps me out a lot when you do. And hit that subscribe button for more videos when they come out. When the next video comes out, a link will be posted in the top right corner. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?